السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم His household, his companions May Allah bless every one of us May Allah سبحانه وتعالى bless the entire ummah May Allah سبحانه وتعالى bless humanity at large and may we be granted the beneficial rain that we are really seeking in this part of the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on us and on all his creatures. Amin. My brothers and sisters, you know that the first of our species to be created, Adam alayhi salatu was salam, who was sent to the earth, was sent in circumstances that were explained to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran to a certain extent. And we all know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested Adam alayhi salatu was salam. So very interestingly, when Adam alayhi salatu was salam in Jannah, in what we call paradise, right at the beginning, was given one instruction by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that was to stay away from something. One might ask, why is it that Allah says don't do certain things? The reality is, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says I created you to test you, the test includes doing certain things and abstaining from certain things. So if you are to do things, you pass the test. Things that you are supposed to do. And then you abstain from things you are not supposed to do, then too you pass the test. But Allah calls Himself merciful. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. We hear that millions of times and we say it too. In the name of Allah, the most forgiving, the most merciful. Or the most merciful, the most merciful. Subhanallah. That is the meaning of Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. He calls himself primarily, right at the beginning, the most merciful. This would mean if sometimes you falter by not doing what you are supposed to be doing, do not lose hope, but get back on track as soon as possible. And if sometimes you did something that you are not supposed to be doing, do not lose hope, but get back on track as soon as possible because your Lord is merciful. Amazing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Adam alayhi salatu was salam and his wife Hawa, may peace be upon them both. Allah says, وَلَا تَقْرَبَا هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَةَ فَتَكُونَا مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Do not get close to this particular tree and the fruit from the tree is being spoken about do not get close to it because if you do, you will be the losers. And from this we learn that whenever we do something Allah has prohibited, it's not Allah who loses, it is us who lose. It is not someone else who's going to lose. The people who perpetrated that crime or did what they were not supposed to be doing are the ones who will lose. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a way out and we're going to speak about that. So Adam alayhi salatu was salam, unfortunately, very unfortunately, shaitan engaged in something known as waswasa. What is the waswasa? Waswasa, as it sounds, you know, was, 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 was. You know, they, shaitan comes and try and whisper things in your system. Allah says, فَوَسْوَسَ لَهُمَ الشَّيْطَانُ Shaitan definitely whispered in his own way, encouraging them to do what was prohibited by promising them false things. When something is prohibited, what happens to us? We look at it and it, somehow it becomes beautified in the system if our iman is weak and some ta somehow we think we're going to be achieving. For example, a person who sees money that's dangling out of somebody's pocket and he's standing in the queue. If his iman is weak, he's going to start thinking, hey, is anyone watching? Look around, right? If his iman is strong, and inshallah it would be the case with all of us, and I pray that it is, even with those who might not have material wealth, they would say, brother or sister, this thing is dangling from your pocket, make sure that you put it away safely, someone might take it. You have succeeded. 
But if your iman is weak, <laughs> then a person says, is anyone watching? No. Then we quickly just pick it. You know, I remember watching a little clip of a man who saw a 10-pound note stuck under the motor vehicle's tire in a parking. And he looked around and he saw, he tried again, he tried again, he couldn't get it out without ripping it. So he decided, let me sit at the cafe that's across the road. He went to sit in quite a busy cafe. And every time someone passed that little note, he looked at it and he looked at them and he, were, he had his, literally his heart in his throat. <laughs> every time he thought someone was going to take it. And a little while later, the owner of the vehicle comes, turns on the car and drives off. Guess what? Everybody in that cafe got up to go and get the note. Subhanallah. They were all watching from the glass. There's actually a clip, you might have seen it. But this is the nature of a person whose iman is weak. If it wasn't, come on, one of those things, subhanallah, be honest. So, shaitan comes and say that, you know, you are going to succeed. You're going to have a few dollars. You can have an extra Coke. You can go to Nando's. Perhaps you might want to go here or there, subhanallah. And you'll enjoy a little bit. Wallahi, that joy is short-lived. But shaitan promises, you know, it's going to be long. <laughs> long, how? هَلْ أَدُلُّكَ عَلَىٰ شَجَرَةِ الْخُلْدِ وَمُلْكٍ لَا يَبْلَىٰ Here is shaitan telling Adam alayhi salatu wassalam and Hawa alayhi salatu wassalam that you know what, can I show you the fruit of a tree if you were to eat from it, you'll never die. And you will be having property or material wealth that will never deplete. Now, anyone who hears that, you know, if you're now 70 years old, 60 years old, someone says, I show you something, you live long. Not like you're not going to die, but you live long. What is it? <laughs> if they tell you to do something against the instruction of Allah, drop it. It's not worth it. But if they tell you to do something, okay, fine, you know what? You need to exercise this way. You need to exercise this. You need to do this diet, for example, or go on to this diet. Alhamdulillah, it's fine. You need to make this dua. That's also okay. But the minute they tell you to do something against Allah, forget about it. Drop it. But in this case, Adam alayhi salatu was salam, it goes to show that the devil sometimes has an impact. That impact is such that even good people can fall. Good people can make a mistake. How do I know that? The best of the lot made mistakes. Obviously, I'm not referring to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was perfect. But I'm referring to some of the other messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where an error occurred. And this is why on the day of judgment, each one besides Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, each one will be saying nafsi, nafsi. As for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he'll be concerned about us, ummati, ummati. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us his intercession on the day of judgment. Say, Ameen. So my brothers and sisters, Adam alayhi salatu was salam, loved by Allah, created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and yet he faltered to a certain extent. He did something he was not supposed to do. What was that? It was that he ended up being tricked by the devil, by shaitan. And as soon as he ate from the forbidden fruit, he regretted, he made a mistake. He said, oh Allah, the two of us have made a big blunder. And if you are not going to forgive us, if you are not going to have mercy on us, we have no hope, we are going to be the losers. So what was the prayer he said immediately? And Allah taught him that. Allah says, okay, you made a mistake. This is how you seek forgiveness. Amazing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Adam alayhi salam how to seek forgiveness as per the verses of the Quran. And then he sought forgiveness using good words. Oh Allah, I will be at a loss if you don't forgive me. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna min al-khasirin. Oh our Rabb. That means whether you've committed a sin or not, Allah is still your Rabb. Allah is still your owner completely. Oh, our Rabb, we have transgressed against ourselves. We are the ones who have done wrong against ourselves. Subhanallah, they are admitting that this was wrong. You had instructed us not to do it, we fell into it. And oh Allah, we have wronged ourselves. If you are not going to have mercy on us, if you are not going to forgive us, we will be the losers. They realized immediately something is 
definitely wrong. My brothers and sisters, I started this way to show you. Allah forgave Adam alayhi salam when he faltered, when he slipped up because there was remorse, there was regret. He sought forgiveness and he turned back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He did not commit that sin again. How many of us make mistakes, commit sins, do things we're not proud of, do things we're not supposed to be doing, miss out on things we're supposed to be engaged in? My brothers and sisters, it's not the end. We are still breathing. We are still beloved creatures of Allah. Allah loves us. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna min al khasirin. That dua, that supplication opened the door of the mercy of Allah years back. The same supplication, do you not think it will open the mercy of Allah, the doors of the mercy of Allah today when we have faulted and we have made mistakes? So it's not the end of the path. The only time we should start worrying is if we have not quit our bad ways and habits. A person persists. For example, you have a bad habit and there are so many bad habits, countless bad habits. I cannot just mention one or two because there are plenty. And shaitan, if he could actually engage in a successful waswasa against Adam alayhi salam, do you really think that we are stronger than Adam alayhi salam? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala to us, Kullu bani Adam khatta wa khayrul khatta'een at-tawwaboon. All the children of the same Adam, all humankind, they make mistakes. And khatta'un does not mean one mistake. They make many mistakes. All of us. Not a single one of us is absolutely perfect. None of us are perfect, but we know when we make mistakes, the hadith says the best of those who constantly err are those who constantly repent as well. I ask you and myself, how many times do I repent? If it is once a day, it's too little. If it is 10 times a day, it is too little. It needs to be more. Let's get it on our tongues. Astaghfirullah al-Azim. Astaghfirullah al-Azim. I seek your forgiveness, O oh Allah. You are the greatest. Subhanallah. Get it on our tongues. Let's look into ourselves and ask ourselves what are the bad habits that we are engaged in. And let's cut them and quit them for the sake of Allah. I promise you it will open the doors of the mercy of Allah. We're desperately seeking for rain. We are desperately asking for so much. Wallahi, you will start seeing it come if you seek the forgiveness of Allah. You turn back to Allah. Allah's mercy only comes to those who deserve that mercy by trying to achieve it. Sometimes Allah gives us even if we don't deserve it because that's, that's the nature of His mercy. But those who deserve it, He will give it to you. Don't lose hope, never despair. My brothers and sisters, if you take a look at the lives of some of the blessed prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give you an example of Musa alayhi salam. One day, there was a skirmish, a little fight between two people. As Musa alayhi salam went to help, he ended up giving one of them a fist. And that fist was such a big blow, subhanallah. It resulted in the death of the person. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. It was quite a soft amin because some of the youngsters must be saying, I wish I had a blow like that. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us forgiveness. Amin. So my brothers and sisters, immediately he knew what I did was wrong. What happened? He said the same dua. Words, similar words. He says, oh Allah, what I did was wrong. This was from shaitan. قَالَ هَذَا مِنْ عَمَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ إِنَّهُ عَدُوٌ مُضِلٌ مُبِينٌ He said, Oh Allah, this is indeed from the devil. Oh Allah, I seek your forgiveness. I have wronged myself. This is from shaitan. He is definitely one who leads astray. He is definitely an outright enemy. Recognize the devil, my brothers and sisters. When you do something you're not supposed to be doing, you need to recognize that this was the waswasa of the devil. We have iman. We have something powerful. It is the shahada. We declare 
أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله how then can we commit a sin thinking that there's nothing wrong with it we should turn to Allah repent seek the forgiveness of Allah and Allah's mercy will begin to show in your life the doors of sustenance shall be opened like Nuh alayhi salam says he tells his people, do you know what? Seek the forgiveness of Allah. He says, oh Allah, I told my people to seek your forgiveness. To seek your forgiveness because you are most forgiving. And as a result, he will open the doors of the skies with the rain that you require. Subhanallah. Through what? Turning back to Allah. And don't just pay lip service. You know you've committed adultery. You know you're hooked on to pornography. You know you're gambling. And you know that you're perhaps doing something totally unacceptable. And you just say every day, Astaghfirullah, 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 Astaghfirullah. But you haven't changed your ways. You haven't quit your habits. You haven't thought about it. You haven't even batted an eyelid. That is not seeking the forgiveness of Allah. That's playing the fool. You slap someone every day, say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Come on. You sound like a mental case. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. You need to be serious about it. You don't repeat it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us forgiveness. Amin. Amin. Now I come to another very, very important point. And this was something that had to be said. My brothers and sisters, we all make mistakes. We all have committed sin to a certain extent. I don't want to ask you to put up your hands if you are perfect because there will be no hands. And the hand that is up will be the most imperfect hand. So what I want to tell you is, the question for you is when people make a mistake around you, what do you do as a result? Did you hear what I asked? When people around you, your loved ones, your spouse, your children, your parents, someone nearby has done something wrong, what is your reaction? When Adam alayhi salam did something wrong, Allah says, look, if you show remorse and you seek forgiveness, I will forgive you. With us, people perpetrate a crime. For example, they do something wrong. What do we do? Number one, we've got to pray for them. We've got to try and help them. And we have to look into ways of rectifying and panel beating. Just like when you've bought your brand new BMW 10 series, what will happen? That's going to come one day, inshallah. <laughs> what will happen? If you had to damage part of the vehicle, you don't throw the whole car away. You have to get it repaired. And you know what? It might cost you a little bit. It might set you back. But I promise you, you will enjoy that vehicle. And you know, if the damage is not so much, a scratch or two, a little dent or two, a little crack in the light, something of that nature, you might want to live with it and nobody will notice. How many times only the owner of the vehicle knows what's wrong? Subhanallah. The others say, mashallah, lovely vehicle. And you say, ah, alhamdulillah. Do you go around telling people, hey, you didn't see the scratch on the other side. Come, I show you. That's not what people do. We do that with material things. Human beings are far more valuable than any BMW. You know, when you're a best friend, they say BFF, right? Subhanallah, best friends forever. And sometimes when you're a really, really good friend, they say B and they put about 20 Fs after that. Subhanallah, that means really forever, forever, forever. So the BMW, whether it's a BMW or WWWW, it is not more valuable than your best friend or your spouse or your child or the Imam in the masjid. He could make a mistake. There could be blunders. He could have committed a sin. But remember, it is he or she who persists and does not return, does not regret, does not show remorse, where we may have to start perhaps distancing ourselves. We tried. And from this, what I mean is, in a marriage and in a family scenario, your brother, your parents, your sister, your child, when they do something wrong, you don't just kick them out and throw them away. Never. That's not what Allah taught us. 
I was reading an article that every 20 marriages, 12 of them are breaking, 8 of them are lasting. And that's a disaster. If that's the truth, wallahi, we need to cry. We need to cry. And if you go to see the reasons for the divorce, you know, people say the marriage was a mistake. Sometimes the divorce was a bigger mistake. There is no angel on earth. You want to divorce someone because they've made one mistake, but you are making another 20 mistakes of a different nature. If that person is prepared to seek forgiveness, if they show remorse and regret, then don't just break it. Don't throw your BMW away solely because one of the panels was badly damaged. No. Repair it. It will cost you a little bit. Try. Work together. And I promise you, the marriages that have been built after a mistake or a sin or something went wrong are far stronger than those who have not tasted that or those that have not been through this. We all make mistakes. We definitely make mistakes. I make them, you make them. Sometimes it's not a mistake. It's a sin, outright sin. But that's the nature of Banu Adam. It's the nature of humankind. Yes, if it is something really evil, perhaps it might be more difficult for us to help. Sometimes a car is written off. In that case, you might want to dispose of it. Scrap metal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Sometimes the sin is way, way too big where a person might seek divorce. You know what? I can't live with this anymore. But for us, sometimes a small matter, something minor. And when I say minor, I'm not belittling sins. But what I mean is that which can be repaired. And you're throwing the thing away. Let's not do that. My brothers and sisters, let's get used to something. Let's try to understand. If we would like the mercy of Allah, show mercy upon others. Show mercy upon those on earth and the one in the heavens will show mercy upon you. Another narration, the Prophet says, Allah will not have mercy upon those who don't have mercy on humankind. People make mistakes. We all make mistakes. Learn to help those who've made a mistake. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Grant us goodness and guidance. So my brothers and sisters, you look at the examples given throughout history, within the Quran, every single place, Allah speaks about a sin committed by someone. If he speaks about the repentance, he always says that repentance was accepted by Allah. Every time. Not once did he say, they sought forgiveness, but we threw them out, we rejected them. No, it is a quality that is divine. It's not easy to forgive, but find it in your heart to make amends. Yes, if something repeats itself and it repeats itself a third time, then maybe we have a bigger problem at hand. But give people a chance. Give people a chance. I recall a person working for someone for many years, many years, almost two decades. And one day, he decided to, when the family was on holiday, he decided to turn on this Mercedes and subhanallah whether he wanted to pinch it or whatever he maybe he just wanted to have a bit of fun and he damaged the vehicle it went straight through the wall of the garage that it was parked in he ran away absconded worried about what his boss is going to say when the boss came back looked for him forgave him told him Joe, don't worry the insurance will pay for that but I keep you back at work wow people told him you are foolish he says, you know what? He's been so honest. He's been such a hardworking guy. He's been working for me for so many years. He made one mistake. I think this is forgivable. Not many of us can do that. But subhanallah, if you can, then indeed you are a person who deserves the mercy of Allah. You had mercy on someone. So I call on all of us. In the same way you and I know what we've done wrong and we expect people to help us and we expect people to forgive us. Surely we should look at others with a similar eye. People say, but I wouldn't do this. Well, you might have done something in the eyes of Allah that is worse. And my brothers, it's important for me to make mention of two types of sins. One is a sin that you commit between you and Allah. For example, a person who drank alcohol, a person who's on drugs, a person perhaps who might have done something of that nature. 
That's between you and Allah. If you seek Allah's forgiveness and you repent and you are serious about it, Allah will forgive you without a doubt. But there is another sin that is between you and a fellow human. You stole someone's wealth, backbiting about someone. You know, you perhaps, well, the, the example that first comes to mind is when you have deceived someone, cheated them. In that case, it's a more dangerous crime because you need the forgiveness of that person as well. And it's not easy for anyone to put the tail between their legs and to go and say, you know what? I'm so sorry what I've done. Very bad. And a lot of us, we say, <laughs> a lot of us will go to the person and say, you know what? Please forgive me for anything I might have done or said. And in your mind, you know, you committed a huge crime. And the person says, yeah, yeah it's okay. It's done. You are lucky that it was a wholesale forgiveness. By right, you were supposed to go and say, you know what, forgive me. When someone comes to me and says, forgive me for everything I might have said or, 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 or did, I say, well, what did you do or say? Please let me know. You know, because I promise you when you go around spreading deception or backbiting, then it's not good enough to just say, forgive me and carry on. And the person says, you're forgiven. That's not enough. Actually, if you are a true mu'min, you would tell yourself, I have done so much damage. I wound up the situation. I'm going to make an effort now that I'm forgiven to unwind everything. So now I will go around and the people I spoke to negative about this party, I'm going to tell them positive things to say, you know, I told you something bad. Unfortunately, I was wrong. Subhanallah. That's the way to seek true forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, inshallah, what we want to see, especially in marriage, because a lot of marriages are breaking, even when we give advice to the couples that are struggling, don't just say, leave him, just leave him. You'll get another guy. But sister, you who is speaking went through a divorce and it's been 20 years and you're still looking for that other guy, right? She's in it. Rather give her the good advice to say, you know what? Try to make it work. Let's see how best. Is he an evil guy? Is he engaging in physical abuse? If that's the case, there's a limit of tolerance. You need to know this. There is a limit of tolerance. I am not saying here from this pulpit today that just go out and forgive everyone and live in every situation you're in. No. Sometimes parents abuse their daughters. We've come across cases where some abuse their own children. There is a limit. There is a line. We will have to do something to save those kids because we don't want it to repeat itself even if it just happened once. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us. I'm not saying in that case. That is an extreme case. It's like writing something off, like I said. I'm not saying that in that case, you should actually now force someone who is going to be living with this abuse, glaring them in their face to live in that situation. No, but I am saying wherever it is something that can be resolved, try your best to resolve it and try your best to forgive people. Give people correct advice as well. Many people, our friends, many times come to us and say, you know, I'm going through the situation. Fear Allah regarding the advice you give them. Make sure that it is something that Allah and His Rasul would be happy with. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on every one of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. Like I said, inshallah, we forgive. We learn to forgive. We commit mistakes. We should seek forgiveness as well. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will indeed open our doors of mercy. Like I started with the dua of rain, I end with the same dua, O oh Allah, we ask you to grant us beneficial rain in this beautiful city of Cape Town and its surrounds. And we ask you to bless us with rain wherever it is short. And we ask you to have mercy upon us, O oh Allah, don't look at our sins, but rather the fact that we are seeking your forgiveness today. O oh Allah, bless us with the most blessed of rain today, tomorrow. And every day, I say this, and 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 I say this, and